The Waveforming Graphs tab contains important information on the differences between measurements before and after using waveforming in your particular room. We already reviewed these graphs back at the beginning of the video. They include frequency response curves, time frequency graphs, and metrics that characterize both the decay time and how the seat-to-seat -seat consistency compares to the RP22 performance levels. To view them, you must connect to your altitude via a simple web browser rather than by VNC. You can do so by typing the IP address of your altitude into the web browser from a device that is on the same local network as your processor. As explained earlier, these results will vary based on your specific room and installation. While waveforming is remarkable in its ability to address the most difficult challenges in small rooms, it is not magic as the laws of physics still apply. Things like the locations of your subs compared to where they should be located and whether you were able to implement the full planar installation or a cylindrical installation will all make a difference in the results you can achieve. For example, the results achieved in that room we showed at the beginning show excellent seat-to-seat -seat consistency up to about 70 Hz. It could have had similar control up to a higher frequency if there were more subwoofers to allow for closer spacing. The room was right on the border between needing four and six subs on the front wall, but we decided to use four simply because it made placing the LCRs easier. Changing the waveforming settings will have an impact on the base performance, but can also affect the overall perceived balance and clarity of your system. Once you're happy with the base improvements achieved with your settings, you can start fine-tuning the rest of your system as you normally would. However, there is one major difference. Waveforming effectively drives all subs together as like a single super subwoofer. This means that base management and every other setting applied to subwoofers must be the same for all of them. As a start, here are the settings we recommend you to experiment with first. Base management first that will determine how the waveforming array of subs integrates with your main speakers. Although the default base management options work well in most cases, you still may want to adjust this default setting based on the specifics of your system to ensure the smoothest sub-speakers handoff around the crossover frequency. The target curve, which is the most effective tool to adjust the overall tonal balance of your system, should be set the same way for both subwoofers and loudspeakers to ensure consistent frequency response. In this optic, we've also added a Link All button at the bottom of the Target Curve page to make this easier for you. Adjusting the overall level of bass outside the Target Curve should be done with Bass Management and LFE Gains, which is located in the Bass Management menu. Please consider using these adjustments instead of the Subwoofer Output Level controls on the Processor tab. Note that the LFE, or Low Frequency Effects channel, is often quite different from the bass content you would find in the screen channels. If you would like more bass, we suggest adjusting the bass management gain with music to get the balance right, since most music recordings do not have an LFE channel. The exception, of course, is music that was mixed in Atmos, such as Apple's Spatial Audio, and therefore not adapted for this initial balance. Then listen to your reference movie tracks and adjust the LFE gain to taste. Waveforming performs best with subwoofers that are suited to your room in terms of power capabilities and bass extension. In some cases, where subwoofers are underspecified and lacking in either of these areas, waveforming may push them too hard. In case you feel like your subwoofers are overstressed, you can always go to the advanced settings of waveforming and change the limiter settings. Set as default to average, you can increase it to soften the filters and stress your subs less. Reversely, systems with sufficient headroom and capabilities could benefit from reducing the waveforming limiter to a softer setting and increase waveforming filter strength to further extract performance out of your system. In addition to the waveforming limiter, one can also reduce the maximum amplitude of the filters applied to the sub using the excursion curve, stressing them even less.